We are having the most gentle descent into fall that I can remember. It has been so long since I can remember being able to have a coffee out on the deck this late into the month. And yet, the leaves have not turned yet. It's a weekend and I can only get by with multiple cups of hot drinks. And you think I would relax, but of course I decide to go for my full morning routine. Oh, it's lovely, I can't wait to get outside. And yet, my makeup beckons me. This foundation here, which is Revlon's Colorstay Longwear, the one that's made for oily skin, oily combination skin, is the best dupe that I've ever found for Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. It just dries down so nicely and looks very much like it. It's not quite as good, but it is a fraction of the cost. That said, don't worry, this vlog is not at all about makeup. Even on the weekends, I do like to look good. Not every day, usually Sunday I have a makeup free day. But being that it's Saturday, I like to spend a little bit of extra time because I'm not so rushed. I'll even put on mascara. What do you know? <laughs> For those of you who ask about my hair, well, you're gonna see a little bit of my routine. Just right after I do a couple errands downstairs, let my hair air dry. Hot chocolate. Actually, not for me. And putting this aside for later. In fact, let's drop it in my purse. So, back to where I was. I always let my hair air dry for about an hour. My hair takes a long time to air dry. And I'm still using this hot air brush that you've seen on this channel over the last seven years, and it's still going. Although parts of the little fibers that stick out of it are falling off, so I think I need a new one. And with the Rogaine, yes, I still use it. And some root spray because I have a lot of gray hair these days, people. Finish it off with some hairspray and I like to use a clip to add a little bit of volume to the front. We're all heading out and we're driving there, which is not usual for this vlog, but come along with. Our trusty car is taking us north of where I live to somewhere you've never seen before. Or at least not on this channel. Good day. I finally left the dungeon for this park here with my family. I'm trying to untangle my microphone wire. This is classic Helen. Okay, one of these days I am going to fork out the money and go wireless. Okay, can you see me? I am wearing uh, my New Balance runners. I actually have a full video on these and it's actually doing very well with both men and women because it's one of the few videos on these particular shoes that are out there and I'm wearing Old Navy um, leggings these are like four years old they're the power soft 7-8 compression tights and this old also Old Navy four-year-old sweatshirt with bell sleeves I love it and then my favorite barber coat this is also a few years old now and I love the lining inside and um, sunglasses that I got for free I can't remember where and of course my Le Pliage bag so that is today's fit all right my guys are coming now so you saw me take this out earlier it's just my miniature binoculars they're from Amazon I use these for bird watching and I will put a link down below if you want a similar pair they've been actually really handy and good 
haven't been here in ages. I love the fence here. I think this is a bad house, just judging by this logo on the side. So we still don't have fall colors. Let me flip you guys around. I am a bit disappointed that there's no, not more orange and red out. Sometimes this happens where it stays warm for a long time. The colors, we don't get the full fall colors and then the leaves just fall and they're still green. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this year. Yeah, more bad houses and in the middle there, a leaning birdhouse. So pretty here. For some context of where we are, this is called Eglinton Flats. It is a ravine style park and Toronto's famous for its ravines, which means it's a park that doesn't go up, it goes down. And so that's what a ravine is. And so this is uh, not a nature reserve or anything like that, but it's kept quite natural. As you can see around me, very lovely. The upside is obviously there's all this beautiful green space. The downside is because you're in a ravine, you hear all the traffic noise that is kind of happening a bit above you and it kind of kills the vibe a little bit, but it is still beautiful to be immersed among these reeds. They're so tall. The only birds I've spotted so far have been Canada geese and uh, a cardinal. Very nice. Those are my guys up in the distance, walking uphill, my least favorite thing to do. Look how green everything is. It's so verdant still. Tiny little patch of flowers here, and you guys know I always stop for flowers. I think that's a type of sedum with an insect on it. Ooh. Berries. That is a cosmos. These are asters. Oh gosh, those of you who know your flowers really well are probably pounding your heads against the screen right now. And I believe these are wild roses, which are some of my favorite to draw, but I'm not gonna have time to draw today. I don't think. We'll see. So pretty. Look how tall the reeds are, or whatever these are. Now, this is a bit of a tangent, but one thing I've been thinking about lately is that I feel like I'm someone who belongs to not just the greater Toronto area, but rather the Great Lakes region. And I really noticed that when I travel, when I travel to places, when they're in the Great Lakes region, even if they're in the US, like Chicago, the atmosphere, uh, the foliage, the trees, even to some extent how the cities are built feels very familiar. The only difference is, and where it gets confusing, is that cities in the Great Lakes region are very much oriented towards their lake, and it's sort of how you wrap your head around where you are. So that changes from place to place, so that I find confusing. I really think these murals are super nice on this building. Canadian gas prices, baby. Where will it stop? Oh, $66.37. So yeah, gas is not cheap. Back on the mean streets, and I have zero energy for this. Let's press this button, actually, or we'll never cross. But sometimes you've got to just show up. I would much rather be at home relaxing, but gotta get it done. Hi. Thanks. 
I would love to sugarcoat it, but that was awful. From minute one at the gym to minute 30 at the gym, I did not want to be there at all, but I did it. I don't toot my own horn that often, but I will say I am in phenomenal shape. I'm in such great shape. <laughs> Believe me, I never brag about these kinds of things. I can keep going for 30 minutes on the treadmill running, really without stopping. I know that I'm in great shape cardio wise. The other place I can tell I'm in really great shape is actually during Pilates class. I'm shaped how I'm shaped. I'm not trying to change my body composition, but I can tell that I'm more fit. I can tell that my core strength is higher. I can tell that I'm stronger. And that's because I've been doing it for seven years. I'm just gonna very briefly touch on, if you are interested, if not, just I guess fast forward, um, getting fit the easy way. Cause it actually has been pretty easy over the last seven years but it hasn't been quick. And so that's, I think the major difference. Really what you need, or at least what has really worked for me is just dedicating 30 minutes a day. I actually started with 20. Dedicate 20 minutes a day to fitness of some sort. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you can walk, walk. If you can run, run. If you can lift five pound weights, which most of us can do that. Going to the gym is great if you can. Some of us feel intimidated because we feel we don't belong there. You absolutely belong at the gym if that's where you want to be. Don't let like bro culture dissuade you from being there. If you're like a middle-aged woman like myself, those guys in general actually, well, A, I'm invisible to them, which is kind of cool. And B, they're actually in a good mood. They're in their happy place, which is the gym. I find them actually generally quite courteous and nice, really. This is terrible to say, but a lot of them are compensating for something that's been difficult in their lives. Maybe they were bullied. Maybe they were just really skinny their whole lives. And so a lot of them are there because like you, they're trying to get to their goals as well. When you're early on in your fitness journey, you don't have to worry too much about like progression. Are you lifting the right amounts of weight? Just start somewhere and you'll know when it starts to become easy, you know that you need to step it up. Do what you can. It's just such an easy, basic concept. And don't be the person, this is this mistake I used to make and I think this is actually vital and the real easy way to get fit is to just chip away at it, right? Marathon style. You're not gonna get fit in like four months or like for somebody's wedding. Forget that, don't do that. that does doesn't work. And don't be like, I go to the gym three times a week and I exercise really hard those days because if you're like me, what might end up happening is that you just are always trying to calculate which days and then like you just don't have the bandwidth to figure it out and then you just end up not going as much as you wanted to. So for me, I make it easy. I go every single day. Tuesday is my rest day. I've actually written a lengthy article about this that I'll put up. You can read it for free. So yeah, it's easy. Just go a lot. Go a lot. Start small. Don't overthink it. Don't complicate things, just show up daily. So I'm chillaxing while watching YouTube and eating my favorite afternoon snack, which is Greek yogurt, Canadian maple syrup, of course, granola, did I say that already? And these are just craisins. Hopefully that was not an obnoxious rant about fitness. It's just something I feel really passionately about because I know many women don't do it and they're discouraged because I think that the way it's looked upon has made it so difficult and complicated. Not to mention many of us who are like my age feel like we should have a personal trainer because once upon a time that was the thing, everybody had a personal trainer. You basically didn't exercise without a personal trainer. This is 100% something you can do completely on your own. You don't need really any help. Again, I keep my routine pretty simple and it's in the article that I told you about that. I will link if you're more curious to read more details about it, but basically like go to Pilates um, a couple times a week now and hit the gym the other days. And the day that I don't go to the gym, I go for like a nature walk. I actually would have preferred to go to Pilates today but I was there a couple days ago and I still have this like sateen, Moulin Rouge, tuberculosis cough remnants, you know, from this cold that I've had. So I actually went to class, sat on the reformer, did one minute of class. And then when I had to fold over to do a move, I started coughing up a lung. So I actually had to kind of sneak out and um, give my regrets to the instructor that I couldn't stay because I was not well, not well. I'm better now though, so I'm looking forward to class this week. Hmm, should I do it? What do you guys think? Yeah, I should do it. All right, we just need this. Okay, let's get these little flats. You'll always see me wearing these into the backyard just because they're very easy to step into. That looks very dorky, but anyway. Okay, which seat will I take? The more shady one or the sunnier one? I think I'm gonna take this sunnier one. I didn't tell you guys, it's a long weekend and it is so quiet in the city. I hear somebody's vintage car engine going. I know it's a vintage car because I've seen it and I recognize it. And other than that, it's really quiet back here. Just gonna put a few stitches into this embroidery that I've been working on for ages. I have a love-hate relationship with embroidery. I love doing it. I find it so peaceful. 
It eats up a ton of time if there's ever anything you're stressed about and you want to get working on. But the downside is it takes forever to do even the most basic piece, like this teeny tiny, what's going to be a Christmas ornament when it's all done and dusted. It's so nice out. I do not remember it being this nice ever for so long into October. I cannot believe the wonderful weather we've been getting. And the leaves are falling, guys. Look. But they're still green, so this is going to be interesting. For those of you who caught last week's vlog where I was finishing up my long course of medication, seven years worth that I got to finally finish, everything I said back then is pretty much the same. It hasn't really changed that much. I feel pretty much the same way, which is I feel good. If you watch to the end, you'll hear that I said that the best part of all of this is that nine o'clock comes and I don't have to get up because I'm usually like watching TV or doing something. I don't have to get up and interrupt what I'm doing to go and take my pill. So every night I still remember to take it, but then I don't actually have to take it. So that's been thrilling. Honestly, that has been so cool after so long of having to take it and never ever forgetting or trying not to forget a single pill. It's great to be free. All right, Niall actually picked me up a second entree as well because I'm an absolute insatiable garbage person. Oh, this looks so good! Woo. These are so cute. These are so cute. I could do with pajamas, but I'm just so not in the mood. Okay, I thought it would be fun to look at Canadian candy for Halloween. Gosh, do you remember these stupid things? They're cigarettes, remember? These are literally all the kinds that I hate. Okay, that's better. Chocolate Reese's. Oh, Henry. Rice Krispie Minis, Kit Kats. Oh my gosh, advent calendars already? I don't want to see that. That's too early. Okay, for sure, I know this brand is Canadian. And they make these too. Look at the cute packaging. Sweet. Peanut free and gluten free. Harry Potter Hershey's Kisses. These must be popular because they're all gone. Okay, I know this is a Canadian one. Proudly prepared in Canada. I know that you don't get this flavor if you're in the US. Coffee crisp and maybe not Smarties either. These are chocolates. Huge Kinder Surprise eggs. Look how big this is. There's more on this side. There's so much here. You can make a haunted house and Dracula shaped Kit Kat. Rockets, I hate these. These are the worst. These are an abomination. They shouldn't even be allowed to sell them. They're literally just sugar tablets. And these Welch's fruit snacks. This one here. There's some more Kool-Aid something. Candies, gummies, sorry. Twizzlers and Jolly Ranchers. This is humongous, huge. We're in Walmart, if that wasn't clear. I love geeking out in this pen section. It has got so much to choose from. They really need to restock their watercolor paper. There is none, it's all gone. I also love to geek out on books, or notepads, I should say. That's a Canadian brand that I always grew up with and I always had this, Hillroy. All right, let's check this out. So this, my friends, is 50 Nestle chocolate bars, Smarties, Arrow, Kit Kat, Coffee Crisp. Every Canadian knows them. Every Canadian loves them. Well, Coffee Crisp is a bit divisive, but I think the rest are crowd pleasers. Okay, because I love you guys, we're gonna open these up. 
and I'm gonna make the great sacrifice of uh, taste testing these. Arrow, Kit Kat, Coffee Crisp, and Smarties, let's have a look. Here's the arrow. The thing about arrow is it is got bubbles inside. Kit Kat. Kit Kat is everywhere. I don't know. This one doesn't need any explanation. It's wafers. The Canadian chocolate though tastes different from the American one. It's like a different formula for the chocolate. So if you do ever come to Canada, you want to check this out. This is a Canadian one. I've never seen this anywhere else. It's got the little Canadian maple leaf right there. Um, this one tastes like coffee and chocolate, like a mocha flavor. Ugh. That's what that looks like. And then good old Smarties. Kids love these because they're fun. They're colorful. They're kind of like M&Ms, but they're thinner. And the shell is not as crunchy, I think. And that's what Smarties look like. They're chocolate inside. Let's see. And that's what they look like on the inside. Okay, here we are. I guess this is gonna be my snack time now that I've opened all of these. 